Have you been stuck at this screen? Or this one? Well, that's probably because your grub bootloader is broken, and I'll be showing you how to fix that. Now, first, I want to discuss why does that even happen in the first place. Now, most of the people I see posting online about this is either people who try to make some a new install of some Linux distro and either didn't configure grub correctly, or people who already have a system up and running but they somehow um, rerun the grub config and misconfigured it, or they remove some grub files accidentally. Now, either way, this is pretty easy to fix usually, so I'll be showing you how to fix that. So, I've got an Arch install right here, obviously, and this one is running grub as a bootloader. So if we go to boot and type an ls in there, we're gonna see that we have a grub directory, and in there we're gonna have all our grub files. So now let's break that. So I'm gonna type in sudo rm, and then I'm gonna remove the grub.cfg, I'm gonna put in the password, and now I'm gonna reboot. So now that we've tried to reboot, we can see that our system is unable to boot back in, and it's put us to this grub screen. Now this is usually what you will see, if you misconfigured grub or you accidentally removed your configuration file or something happened in your system where your configuration is no longer working from here we need to find our root partition and our boot partition so i'm going to clear the screen type in ls it's going to show me all the attached devices now hd0 is probably going to be the physical device and if i type in ls on hd0 we can see that there is no file system detected and that's probably because it's our physical drive. CD0 is going to be the CD drive emulator for this virtual machine. So it's probably going to be uh, GPT-1 and GPT-2. And to find which is which, I'm going to type in LS and I'm going to type in the device name. So it's going to be GPT-1, for example. And then I'm going to press tab and it's going to show me what's the files inside that directory. And from here, we can see that we have our uh, Linux kernel files and we also have our grub directory and our AFI directory. That's probably going to be our boot uh, partition. So if we go to the GPT-2 and press tab, we're going to see that we have all our system files in there. So that's probably going to be our root partition. Now from here, what Grub needs to know, what's our root partition device address? And to do that, we're going to be using cat. And then from our root partition, we're going to go to Etsy, fstab, and press enter. It will show you our fstab file. And from here, we can tell that our root partition is forward slash dev, forward slash sda2 and our boot partition is forward slash dev forward slash sda1 and the reason i know it's our root partition is because it's mounted at forward slash and the second partition is mounted at forward slash boot so it's going to be our boot partition so from here we know where is our root partition and where is our boot partition and we also know where is our root partition address which is forward slash dev forward slash sda2 so now we're just going to need to tell what files grub needs to boot into and there's going to be two files. First, it's going to be the Linux kernel files. We're going to use the command Linux. And from here, we're going to go to our boot partition. So hd0, gpt1, forward slash. And then I'm going to type in vm. And then I'm going to press tab to autocomplete. And it's going to be vm linux slash Linux. So make sure there is a space in there. And then I'm going to type in root equals to our root partition address. So it's going to be forward slash dev forward slash sda2 then press enter now we're going to need to tell grub where is our initrd files so type in initrd and these also going to be in our boot partition so they're going to be in hd0 gpt1 forward slash then I'm going to type in init press tab to autocomplete and it's going to be initramfs slash linux dot img press enter and then from here all you got to do is just type in boot give it a second and now we're booting back to the system. Sweet. So now that we can see that we have booted successfully, we are still not done yet. We manually use grub to tell where our kernel files are, but the grub config is still broken. So if we reboot, we're gonna go back to the same screen. So now we're gonna have to fix the grub config. And to do that, it's very simple to do. I'm gonna switch to the root user. So the first thing I'm gonna do is regenerate the grub config file. I have in grub mkconfig slash o and then the location of the grub config is going to be in boot forward slash grub forward slash grub.cfg press enter now we regenerate our grub config which is going to have to run grub install so type in grub slash install and then the location of your boot directory so i'm going to type in slash slash efi slash directory equals to forward slash boot and this depends from system to system but most of the time it's either going to be forward slash boot or forward slash boot forward slash EFI. You can try, and if it doesn't work, you can try the other one. But for me, I know my system is going to be in forward slash boot, so I'm just going to 
type in that and then press enter and it says installation finished no errors reported so now if i reboot we can see that grub is working correctly and we can see it's booting back to the system without any problems nice and simple so this is how to fix grub if you just messed up your configuration or you misconfigured it or something in your system has changed and your configuration is no longer valid but what happens if you actually delete all the grub files let's try that so i'm gonna go to boot I'm going to type in ls and then I'm going to do sudo remove grub and then I'm going to delete the entire directory. Now I'm going to reboot and now we can see that our system is unable to boot back in and we are presented with this grub rescue screen. Now from here you're pretty much done. There isn't that much you can do from this screen and for example I can show you if I type in clear it says unknown command. If I type in linux it's going to say unknown command. If we type in init rd it's unknown command. So this is still fixable, but you're going to need a live ISO to do that. So I'm going to insert the live ISO. I'm going to reset my machine. Now that we are booted in the live ISO, from here I'm going to type in lsblk. It will show me all my drives. And um, from here we can see that there's a few devices. There is a loop zero device. We don't need to worry about that. It's just a loopback device. And we can see that there is SR0, which is going to be our CD-ROM drive. And then we're going to see the SDA, which is going to be our system drive. So from the grub screen that we learned, SDA1 is our boot drive and SDA0 is our root drive and from here if you don't know which is which and you want to find what's your root partition and what's your boot partition you can just mount them and then check what's the files inside so to mount them I'm going to type in mount forward slash dev forward slash SDA2 and then I'm going to mount this in forward slash MNT and if I go to forward slash MNT now and press ls we can see what's inside the SDA2 drive and as we can see from here there is all our system files in there, so it's probably going to be our root drive. So now we mounted that, I'm going to also mount in our boot drive. So I'm going to type in mount, forward slash dev, forward slash sda1. And I'm going to mount this in forward slash mnt and forward slash boot. Press enter. I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to now root to our mounted drives. Now, since this is Arch, I'm going to use Arch to root. But if you are in Debian based distro, you can just use the command to root to work basically the same and then i'm going to give it the location where we mounted our drive so it's going to be in forward slash mnt now we are back inside our system by i'm in ls you can see that all our system files are here from here we can do the same steps to fix our grub i'm going to go to boot and if i ls in here since we don't have any grub directory you're going to have to create one so i'm going to type in mkdir grub and then i'm going to regenerate the grub config by i in grub slash mkconfig slash o forward slash boot forward slash grub forward slash grub.cfg press enter and then i'm going to run grub install and then slash slash efi slash directory equals to forward slash boot for me but for you it might be forward slash boot forward slash efi installation finished no errors reported i'm going to exit out of here i'm going to unmount everything and then i'm going to try to reboot Alright, so now as you can see, we can boot right back in and our system is working correctly without issues. We've fixed all the grub issues by simply regenerating the grub config and rearranging grub install. And that's how we basically are going to fix most of the grub issues. Unless there is something very complicated in there or maybe your devices are not mounted correctly. Alright, so that's about it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the content and you want to see more Linux videos, then please be sure to subscribe because the algorithm may never bring us back together again. That's it for me. I'm going to peace out. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. See ya.